from Auckland. We got into the city after a smooth flight from Christchurch and we've been spending a couple of days with family since. So we have been soaking that up rather than doing any major sightseeing, but we are planning on rectifying that today. And what do we always do when we're in a new city? Go on a free walking tour. Let's go! free walking tour and I have really enjoyed hearing about New Zealand's origin story. I learned that the Maori people didn't arrive here until 1350 which my understanding is that is quite late for an indigenous population when you compare it to Canada or Australia probably but it makes sense because New Zealand is so far away. And then the other thing that I didn't know which maybe I should have clued into earlier is that the Maori people actually have Asian heritage. So they originated in China in 3000 BCE and slowly made their way to Taiwan and Papua New Guinea and Vanuatu, Fiji. They went up to Hawaii and basically down here to New Zealand in 1350. So I just thought that their ancestry from Asia was really fascinating and something I didn't know about before. But what is also kind of interesting is that we mentioned Australia, Canada and other new world countries as they were called at the time. And it does seem like what happened to the Maori people here is kind of very similar to what happened to other First Nations peoples. European settlers came over, they formed a treaty, that treaty was conducted in two different languages. The natives understood it to be one thing, which is more sharing the land, maintaining their own status in the land, but just allowing for the Europeans to be able to eat on it. Whereas then the Europeans, one could say deliberately, accidentally, who really knows, misinterpreted it to be, we are purchasing this land off you, we are claiming sovereignty of these lands and therefore it's our land now. So yeah, the very fact that no matter which peoples are being affected, no matter which of these countries you're talking about, then essentially the same fate befell pretty much all of them. But yeah, we've got another half to this tour, so let's check out what we can. Just like that, we finished up the tour. We went again with I'm Free Walking Tours. So those are the same people with whom we did Sydney and Melbourne. But unlike in Sydney and Melbourne, this one is a one person operation. So Matt, who took us on our tour today, is the only person who does that. And for that reason, it means that the tours are a lot less frequent. I think he only does a couple of tours a week. So if you are planning on going through I'm Free for your Auckland walking tours, then it definitely is worth making sure that you book in advance so that you can make sure all your dates line up. He did mention that they are planning to expand their team, but that just hasn't happened yet. He said that he's been doing this tour for four months, so they're a new operation, but he was really fantastic and very friendly. This is a very good quality tour company that is just starting up basically although they've been in Australia for 
years and years. Absolutely. But if you do want to get a nice introduction to a city as great as this, then you are more than welcome to go to I'm Free. We would recommend them. That is about it for what we have planned for today. We're just going to go grab a gelato, a coffee and head home. Good morning. Today is unfortunately our last full day in Auckland and our last full day in New Zealand. Very sad me. It's crazy how fast the month has flown by, but when we realized that this was our last day, we knew that we needed to have one more pie. Let's go out in search of that one final pie. <laughs> We've come to Golden Kit Bakehouse and Nick has gone for a steak and cheese pie as well as a sausage roll and I've gone for a steak and pepper pie. I'm so excited but yet so sad that this is going to be our last pie. The thrush is very nice and flaky and the inside is like warm and gooey. It could do to be a little bit warmer. I'm not gonna lie and say this is the best pie that we have had in New Zealand, but it is definitely really, really good and will satisfy our craving. That said though, the actual meat filling is amazing. The steak just falls apart in your mouth and is truly delicious. Like, while it's not the absolute best pie that we've had in New Zealand, it's still very, very good. And that was delicious. While we have had a few pies in New Zealand, I think the best one that we ended up trying was, believe it or not, outside of Milford Sound in their cafe near the visitor center. You ended up having a minted lamb one. It was so good. And I had a venison one, which was possibly one of the nicest things I've ever tried. So, shockingly, that is our tip on a really good pie here in New Zealand. And I think having a pie is the perfect way to bring our month in New Zealand to an end. It has just been such an amazing month. I cannot get over how beautiful this country is. It is just so mountainous and the lakes are the most gorgeous color of blue. It really reminds me of British Columbia and Alberta, but instead of just being parts of a province, it's this entire country. And the other thing that I found fascinating is that New Zealand's population is only 5 million. It's a very small population. And at least a fifth of it is concentrated in Auckland. So when we were driving through the country, I was absolutely amazed that you would literally have nothingness and then a small town. And then nothingness where it's just so remote. There's no lead up of suburbs to the town. It just kind of appears out of nowhere. Whereas in Canada, you have these towns, but then there are people who are living out in the country too. So it's never that remote. It is interesting because you talk about New Zealand to pretty much anybody who's ever been and they say it's an amazing place. You can have such a good time. I think we had a little bit of a come down coming off of Australia because like we had such an amazing time there. But I think once we really got into it, New Zealand ended up being pretty much everything we wanted it to be and more. And I think that was the real beauty of it. It was some of the best driving experiences that I think I've ever had. The countryside is absolutely amazing to go through. All of the terrain is incredible. The nature is diverse and interesting. And on top of that, you can kind of just get more or less whatever experience you want out of it. It has mountains where you can ski in the winter, homegrown wine if you want to as well, because it's got the climate for that. There's volcanoes in the north, huge mountains in the south with glacial lakes, and so ample hiking, surfing if you want it, with all manner of different marine life if you want to go snorkeling or diving. Honestly, there are very few things that this country can't do. And I think for that reason, then it's ended up being what feels like a very well-rounded month here. If somebody were to offer for us to come back to New Zealand, I'd come back in a heartbeat, I think. We might even come back on our own accord. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Wouldn't take someone inviting us. Really. No, probably not. 
but we do actually have to go back to Canada. We will tell you more about that in our next vlog, but we're hoping that it's only a brief stint, although we don't exactly know how long it will be, but as soon as we're able to leave Canada, we will so that we can continue on to the next part of our around the world adventure. So look out for more details in our travel day video when we go from Auckland to Toronto. But until next time, take care. And keep smiling.